Okay, section 1.2, a taste of tasks and architectures. A reader completing this book is to gain a mathematically aided understanding of deep learning. This includes understanding deep learning model architectures designed for a variety of tasks, as well as an understanding of the motivation behind several architectural choices. Further, since deep learning architectures and their training algorithms go hand in hand, the journey also encompasses key methods used to train such models. To get a feel for the models and architecture covered, we now present an overview of the key tasks and architectures. Figure 1.3 presents schematics of key architectures, which include the simplest fully connected networks in A, convolutional architectures, which are especially effective for image-related tasks in B, recurrent neural network architectures, which are traditionally useful for text or sequence data and deal with tasks of translation and language analysis in C, the LSTM, long short term memory variation of this architecture, which has gained much popularity in recent years in D, variations of architectures involving encoders and decoders, such as the semantic uh, image segmentation network in E, and general adversarial models, which are very effective for tasks of generating fake data that are similar to the original data in F. Also of interest and not depicted in the figure are attention-based models and transformers covered in chapter seven, as well as methods for the task of controlling dynamic systems via deep reinforcement learning covered in chapter eight. There's also graphical neural networks covered in chapter eight and diffusion models, uh, which deal with a similar task such as GANs all in chapter eight. So this is a figure and you see uh, A is the fully connected uh, network, B is a convolutional network, C, this is a recurrent neural network and this is its unrolled version. Uh, D is an LSTM long short term memory node. So this node here represents this unit here, a node or a unit are synonymous. Uh, in E you see one form of an encoder decoder architecture where you have, in this case, an input image and the output has semantic segmentation of that image. Um, so whatever was adorned, that image is colored in one color, et cetera, et cetera, for floor, for a cupboard, for other things. And in F, you see the um, generative adversarial network architecture. So let's hear about each of these in brief. Fully connected neural networks. The most basic deep neural network is a fully connected feed-forward neural network. It is illustrated in figure 1.3a and covered in detail in chapter 5. Simple special cases of this network are the linear model analyzed in chapter 2, as well as logistic regression or multinomial softmax regression, both covered in chapter 3. Mathematically, feed-forward fully connected neural networks are simply combinations of affine linear transformations, and nonlinear activation functions. They constitute a very basic mechanism for enhancing the classical linear model with nonlinearities. It turns out that this enhancement gives the model F sub theta an incredible ability to express complex relationships, y equals F sub theta of x, while supporting an algorithmically tractable way of finding theta, that's training. Classically, these models are also called multi-layer perceptrons. Since they are descendants of the first ever neural network model, the perceptron, developed by Frank Rosenblatt in the late 1950s. Multi-layer perceptrons are sometimes abbreviated as MLPs. In terms of tasks achieved with this architecture, it is useful for classification, regression, or feature extraction when the data does not have a specific structure and a high expressive ability is needed. While the models are heavily parameterized, they often work well for such ad hoc tasks. Components of such networks called fully connected layers can also be components of more complex architectures. 
Understanding training of these architectures, where gradients are computed via the famous backpropagation algorithm, also covered in Chapter 5, after automatic differentiation is introduced in Chapter 4, is key to understanding of deep learning. Fully connected networks are also for understanding key ideas, such as dropout, batch normalization, skip connection, weight initialization, which are all at the heart of deep learning. Convolutional neural networks. The VGG19 model used in the discussion of section 1.1 is one example of a convolutional neural network architecture. This class of models illustrated in figure 1.3b and covered in detail in chapter six constitutes the most famous specialization of fully connected neural networks. Convolutional models are primarily used for image analysis, and it is fair to say that the recent success has shuffled the cards in the broad field of image processing. Beyond images, these models can be adapted for other domains, such as radiology, data, or audio. As alluded to in section 1.1, in the context of images, there are multiple related tasks, including classification, semantic segmentation, and localization. And all of these can be handled via convolutional neural networks. Convolutional neural networks can be viewed as adaptations of fully connected networks, where the action of each layer is not based on the full connections between activations, but rather on smaller trainable convolutions. These convolutions maintain a spatially homogeneous structure in the network. Such a setup significantly reduces the number of parameters, allows for deeper architectures, and most importantly, capitalizes on spatial relationships present in the input. As a consequence, for a similar size of theta, example, 144 million parameters, as in the VGG19 model, one may have a much deeper architecture than would have been possible with a fully connected network. As a consequence, training is more efficient and better performance is achieved. In addition to the core trainable convolutions idea, convolutional neural networks introduce additional architectural concepts such as the use of channels and the use of pooling or max pooling in particular. Huge leaps with convolutional neural networks were made during the first half of the second decade of this century. The incredible success of the so-called AlexNet model in the 2012 ImageNet challenge boosted neural networks within the world of machine learning. This, in many ways, started the deep learning revolution and put deep learning at the forefront of ML after the field was on the sidelines for many years. Recurrent neural networks and other sequence models. While key advances during 2010 through 2015 were in the convolutional domain focusing on images, the second half of that decade witnessed deep learning becoming an integral part of natural language processing, NLP. By today, automatic translation engines, language generation models, and other solutions for tasks associated with text almost always involve deep neural networks or are entirely based on deep learning models. There are multiple architectures in this domain where the most basic one is a recurrent neural network illustrated in figure 13C. And a key variation is based on LSTM, long short term memory nodes illustrated in D. These models together with other ideas such as attention and transformers are introduced in chapter seven. A key attribute of such architectures is that the input data is a sequence often without a pre-specified length. While the field of NLP constitutes the main domain where these tasks of models, where these types of models have been most impactful, there are multiple other domains where considering sequence data is a natural choice. These domains include genomic sequences, multivariable time series, audio, and even video. Encoder, decoder, and autoencoder models. In many cases, one may wish to use the internal representation of the architecture to extract meaningful features from the inputs. This is called feature extraction 
and we call the outputs of this process computed features or sometimes derived features. Feature extraction in general is introduced in chapter two and further discussed in chapter eight. After carrying out feature extraction, the computed features may then be transformed into outputs used for clustering the data or used for other manipulations of data. Variants of architectures that make use of feature extraction fall under the name of encoders, since they encode input into computed features. Decoders, since they decode computed features to output, as well as autoencoders, since these architecture com architectures combine the tasks with an aim of having an output which matches input. Particularly with an autoencoder, the goal is to find computed features theta such that x equals f theta of x is approximately maintained. So basically, we're trying to learn the identity function approximately and find the parameters that make this identity function. The application of encoders, decoders, and autoencoders to different tasks is omnipresent in deep learning architecture and design. There are hundreds of applications and variations. One example is in figure 13E, where the input where input images are encoded and then decoded into output semantic segmentations of the images. See also figure 12A for a presentation of semantic segmentation, as well as a discussion in chapter 6. General adversarial networks. Sorry, uh, generative adversarial networks. A generative adversarial network, GAN architecture, is illustrated in one figure 13F and introduced in chapter 8. These types of models are used to create fake artificial data that resembles the original data set. Advances of the last years have shown the ability to use these models to create real looking images of people and other artifacts. Some of this technology has also been put to negative use via deep fakes but other aspects are very useful for augmenting existing training datasets, computer animation, and other domains. The key idea of a GAN is to simultaneously train two deep neural networks, a generator and a discriminator. The former, namely the generator, generates fake data, while the latter, namely the discriminator, attempts to determine if the data is fake or real. As the training of both of these networks progresses, the generator is ultimately able to fool the discriminator and as a consequence also create a re create real looking data. Much of the choice of architecture is then with finding measures of the quality of the data and the discriminator, as well as with algorithms for jointly training these networks. In contrast to other deep learning ideas that are attributed to a collective of many researchers and practitioners over the years, the initial GAN ideas attributed to a single person, Ian Goodfellow, who drove the original GAN paper in 2015. Originally, a game theory analogy was made for this architecture since the generator and discriminator play a two player game. See the notes at the end of the chapter for further details, as well as chapter. Eight. Deep reinforcement learning. One of the great leaps of AI during the second decade of this century is in the game of Go. See references at the end of the chapter. This strategic board game was long considered much more difficult to program in comparison to other games such as chess. Here's a footnote, footnote five. Computers have shown their superiority in the game of chess since the mid 1990s with the notable victory of the deep blue chess playing expert system defeating the champion Gary Kasparov over a six game match in 1996. Okay, so that's about chess, but we're here about Go. Yet in 2015, a team from DeepMind through a series of advances and competitions designed a system called AlphaGo, which beat the world's best Go players. This highly publicized achievement made the dream of artificial intelligence a bit more concrete by um, showing the ability of neural networks to solve complicated tasks. 
The key ideas of this achievement are from the field of reinforcement learning, an area of control theory where neural networks were used to augment the system to create deep reinforcement learning, deep RL architectures. Deep RL architectures studied in chapter eight are suitable for controlling dynamic systems in uncertain environments. Many believe that deep RL systems are the future of artificial intelligence since they allow to create modules that dynamically handle tasks. In practice, there is a long way to go until such systems will be generally applicable for non-narrow tasks. There are multiple challenges, such as dealing with the curse of dimensionality and with generalizing between scenarios. More details are in chapter eight and the epilogue of this book. So thank you. This concludes section 1.2. We hope you find it useful. As always, happy to get your comments in the comment section of this video or make contact for other feedback as well. Thank you.